All my Cold Steel fans, you guys are probably like, yes, Matt, awesome, another Cold Steel blade. To all those guys who maybe aren't the biggest fans of Cold Steel knives, you guys are like, Matt, when on earth are you going to do a review of a different brand? I know, I've been doing a lot of Cold Steel blades, they're my favorite company, I do a lot of their knife reviews, I do a bunch of reviews of other knives, you know, we saw this Griptilian, uh, you know, we saw... Uh, review of the K bar not that long ago. So I do other knives, but I just like Cold Steel's designs. I like their blades, so I do a lot of reviews on Cold Steel's. Today we are looking at the Cold Steel Recon Scout. Now this is a really interesting knife, and we're gonna get into why I think this is kind of a, a, a really really great option if you're going into the woods. We're gonna talk about that in the unique portion. Um, first, let's get into the specs, then we'll get into what I like, what I don't mind, what I dislike, and then we'll talk about that unique thing. So let's first, let's do some size comparisons real quick, though. Uh, let's put it up against, uh, you know, something similar sized, the K-Bar. This is that USSF K-Bar, right? <laughs> so very similar in size, much different in weight, guys, much, much different. Uh, this has a little bit of a longer blade, uh, about a half an inch longer on their uh, rat tail tang. This is... This is not really a rat tail tang. It's a much thicker. It's not kind of what you would consider um, a classic rat tang. All right, let's put it up against, we just saw this as folder, so you guys can get an idea. This is a full-size griptilian. Uh, let's put it up against, let's say, um, something similar, kind of in the same vein. Outdoor survival kind of knife. Cold Steel SRK, San Mai, nicely scratched. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's good enough for size comparisons. Let's move on to the specs, guys. So on the Cold Steel Recon Scout, you are looking at um, a, a, uh, a 15 ounce overall blade. So relatively heavy knife, and we will talk about why. Well, let's just talk about it in the specs real quick. It's because it's 0.31 inches at its thickest point. Much thinner, obviously, tapers up at the top, but it is 0.31 uh, inches thick. Very, very stout blade. Uh, seven, in, seven and a half inch blade, 12.5 inches overall. Uh, this is a Kraton handle, very similar to what you see on the Cold Steel um, SRK and Master Tanto and all those different knives. Um, it is a, as you can see, full flat ground clip point. This is made, this is the version of CPM 3V. Um, got that new logo right there, Taiwanese produced. They've been made in many different steels. I think it was Carbon 5 originally, then SK5, then, you know, they've made it in a few different steels, but currently this is made in 3V. Um, if you want to pick one of these up, uh, I, man, prices have varied. I got this off Midway USA, great knife dealer, um, for 200 bucks, which is, in my opinion, a steal for this much CPM 3V. Um, but I've seen them all the way up to 400 bucks. So that's what you're looking at for this blade. So let's get into what I like about this knife. So, I really like this full flat ground clip point. I love a Bowie style blade. Yes, I'll start and try and pronounce it the correct way, which is Bowie and not Bowie. Um, but I really like this full flat ground clip blade. It slices very nice. As you guys can see, uh, I've put some wear on this. I took it out in the woods a couple times. Uh, so I can give you kind of a good data point, I think, on how this performs out there. Uh, slices very nicely, especially for how thick it is. Um, you know, because of that full flat grind, you just have a lot of material to slide through. And uh, so it slices very nicely and it's also very good looking. Um, another thing I love about this is just the stoutness and how kind of durable and kind of crazy uh, overbuilt this knife is. Uh, you know, you look at this and you look at the K-Bar and you're like, oh yeah, similar kind of knife. That's a little bit of a wider blade. But I mean, just look at the differences in their stock. Um, this is just, it doesn't really hold a candle. Now this is still a great knife. Um, it's going to perform well and be tough enough for most uses you could want it to. But it just, this is about as durable as a knife you can get because not only of that stock, but also because it is CPM3V. And I love CPM3V, you guys know. Uh, it's it's honestly like the perfect fixed blade steel. I've heard that 4V and MagnaCut are kind of giving it its run for its money. Still, um, 3V is just fantastic. It performs so well, holds a great edge. It's not, you know, it's, it's not gonna not rust, but it, it, I haven't really had many issues with 3V rusting at all. So. Um, I just love how stout this is because of the thickness and because of the 3V. I also really like this guard. Now I want to talk about something real quick and I brought these over here for you. You guys know uh, I don't like top guards. As you can see, that has been cut off. And guess what? Uh, this didn't come like this. So you can see that's not quite perfect on the top there. 
this is what came on the top. Um, so I cut the guard off. It took a while actually because that, look at that compared to that right there. That's the K-bar guard that I cut off. And this is the um, Recon Scout guard that I cut off. Very, very, a uh, lot thicker, right? So, um, but I like this stainless guard. I think it makes it feel and look like an elegant knife, like a well-made knife. It's kind of venturing into that category of, yeah, it kind of, it looks more artsy than something like this. Because I think that guard, and I've seen this on a lot of, um, a lot of fall nevens as well. Uh, that guard just elevates it to make it look much classier and much nicer. Um, yes, it adds some weight, but I still really appreciate that guard. And it really, really elevates the looks of this knife, in my opinion. I really like this Craton as well, guys. Now, the Craton on this, for some reason, maybe it's because the tang is thicker. I'm not sure, but it feels stiffer than um, than, oops, just drop that, than something like this. And now that I hold them, they still do feel very similar. But I, I love this Craton grip. Uh, this handle is just as comfortable as the other handles. It's not maybe not as quite as contoured and comfortable as something like this. Still very comfortable, almost coffin-shaped, but with a little bit of a dip in here, so it's gonna fill your hands out a little bit better. Um, coffin shape, very common for, you know, that kind of classic Bowie, Bowie style knife, uh, but very, very comfortable. I really, really appreciate this. Now, I also love the overall uh, balance and feel of this knife. Now, this isn't a lightweight knife. It's 15 ounces, guys. It's seven and a half inches and it's 15 ounces. The Ontario SP5, which I think I showed in my Magnum Tanto video, is also 15 ounces. That's a nine inch blade. This is a heavy knife. Um, now, is it too heavy? I'm gonna argue no, it's not too heavy because you know what else weighs about 15 ounces? Uh, the SE5, uh, shorter blade, right? So there are numerous knives that are just as heavy, some even heavier, with less reach on them. So I don't think it's too heavy, but it is a heavy knife. And I like the feel of that because this knife isn't meant to be your lightweight K-bar. It's not meant to be that. It's it's meant to have a bit more capability in splitting in the woods and also a little bit of chopping capability, something that the K-Bar or especially something like the SRK really does not have. So I really like that this knife has heft to it, but it's not ridiculously heavy. Like I said, the SC5 is about the same weight. Um, you know, a lot of the new uh, fall nevens with their enormous stock on them, I think they're about this thick. Um, they are about the same weight as well. So it's not out of the range of, you know, kind of possibility. It's not, it's not crazy that it weighs that much. I also like the size of this knife. Um, I think that about seven inches, seven and a half inches, especially with this choil, which you can really get your finger into, um, it's a good blade size. Some people it's going to be too big. Some people, they're like, all I need in the woods is this right here. Uh, I need this size blade. No, maybe not even this big. Some guys like a folding knife, you know, a tiny little folding knife. And that's fine. If that's what you like, that's uh, that's okay. This is a plenty capable knife for what it is, but it's still a three inch blade. You know, um, when I go into the woods, especially on my backpacking trip, guys, I often want a one tool option. I want something to where I'm going to have to carry one item that can chop a bit, that can split, that can help me prepare firewood, that could be, you know, um, God forbid, a, a defensive knife against, you know, animals uh, or anything like that. So I want a knife that's going to kind of do all of that. And for me, a knife this size, this would have to be paired off with something larger if my trip's going to be enjoyable and if I'm going to, you know, have a good time. So uh, I really like the size of this. I think that about seven inches is a great kind of one tool option. We'll talk about that a little bit more in what I think is unique about this blade. Let's get into what I don't mind. So we kind of touched on it. Um, the top guard, I don't really, it's something I don't really love, especially because I know Cold Steel and a lot of other, uh, you know, knife companies, they make knives specifically that are designed as fighting knives. And, you know, Bowie knives are fighting knives. Um, but they, you know, there's kind of, there's, there's a bit of controversy about the history because yes, they were fighting knives, but uh, you know, there's a lot of, from what I can understand, especially in the civil war, um, people using Bowie knives in, in utilitarian purposes as axes essentially. So in my opinion, they're both right. Uh, so on a knife like this, which is primarily for me and primarily what cold steel seems to market it as an outdoors blade, I don't want a guard that goes in the back 
I like the guard. I like that it's a uh, stainless guard, but I would prefer if it, it just came from the factory like this because you want to be able to get up on that. If this is your this is your wood split, you want to be able to get up higher on it. So uh, that's something I don't mind. It's not something I don't like necessarily because there's it's not a function of the knife that's wrong, right? It's just something I don't prefer. Okay, let's get into what I don't like. And this is a controversial one. I know. Guys, I'm going to start saying I don't really like these SecureX sheets. Now, you can see I modified this sheet. Let's uh, get the knife on the table. We'll talk about this. This, this SecureX sheath actually fits really nicely. It clicks really nicely. It's not too hard. It, you know, some of my SecureX sheaths I've gotten, especially with my current Master Tanto and 3V, it doesn't fit right. Um, it does not click. It's not positive. This fits actually very nicely. And you guys can see I modified this. I took an old belt. Uh, I, uh, I burned down those edges so I can carry it scout carry, which is how I like to carry my knives because often uh, when I'm in the woods, I may have a, a pistol or something on me. Um, so I don't like secure X sheaths anymore. I don't hate them, but I don't like them. And here's the reason why. Um, even even if it does this, even if it you know it, it, even if it it's positive and it's actually like a well performing sheath. Two reasons. Look at this. Look at how darn scratched up this blade is, guys. This is 3V. This is not a soft steel. This is not Sam Mai. I expect this to scratch like crazy. There's something in there, and I've cleaned this out a million times, that's scratching this blade like crazy. I mean, look at that. Um, this would be a beautiful satin fish finished blade if it wasn't scratched up, right? This scratches the blade, and it dulls the edge. And, you know, I, I really want to want to kind of make a plea to cold steel because you know so many of us love their knives but the secure x sheaths which they they perform well often but there's just there's something that doesn't sit right with me with a knife that's this expensive and this well made and really beautifully crafted with a sheath that is just so mediocre it's just very disappointing um i would love to see cold steel switch to a different material um you know i don't know what they could switch to you know uh, I would love to see the leather back. Not everyone would, but but just a different material that would be just as sturdy, but isn't going to dull the edge and isn't going to scratch up our blades that we spend a lot of money on, right? So uh, I'm going to start saying it. I don't like the Secure X sheath, even though I'm currently using it um, and it's, it's performing just fine. You know, it's strong, it's sturdy, it's stout. I've modified this one, um, but eventually I probably will get a leather sheath made for this blade, especially because. I like it so much. So that's the thing I don't like. Everything about the blade itself, I think is great. Um, I really appreciate. Yeah, um, that tip is a little bit thin, but you know what? Um, I'm going to stop complaining about that because on knives like this where this tip's even thinner, look at that. I have pounded um, the crap out of this thing and nothing has happened to it. So I think it looks thin, but I think it's plenty strong, right? Okay, so what's unique? This is your one tool option, right? When you go into the woods, like I mentioned before, this is your one tool option. This, it's not gonna do anything perfectly, right? Blade this thick isn't gonna slice nearly as well as a kitchen knife, right? Um, uh, blade this short isn't gonna cut like an ax. Uh, it's not gonna baton like, um, you know, a larger uh, full flat ground blade but it's going to be that knife that can do everything adequately. And that's what I really, really appreciate about it. And that's what's unique. You know, a lot of people talk about knife like the K-Bar. Well, that could be your one tool option. It could, but it doesn't have the thickness to hack. And occasionally you need that thickness. Occasionally you need that ability, right? So this is your one tool option. A knife like this is your one tool option. And I really like that. And so if I can only just carry one knife, it's going to be a knife just like this, like this Recon Scout. Guys, I absolutely recommend the Cold Steel Recon Scout. I know that they can be had for cheaper, but even at, you know, 300 bucks, this much 3V and this just this high quality of a blade, it's worth it. It's going to last you your entire life. Pick one up, guys. I absolutely recommend them. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, you know, we got a bunch of blades coming up for review. Let me know what you want to see reviewed on this channel. I will do my best to get it reviewed. As always, have a good one. Take care. Peace.